Hey, good Thursday, everybody. Welcome back. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about on this Halloween as multiple storm systems are continuing uh, to cause problems across the country. Uh, one big one crossing right now, but there are others on the way, including uh, the ongoing uh, threat of some tropical trouble that could get pulled up into the Gulf of Mexico uh, within the next seven days or so. Uh, now, I'm going to break all that down for you in today's video, but if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Like the video, comment, let me know where you're watching from, and hit that bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date uh, every time I post a new video with the latest model guidance and a breakdown of that guidance. Um, now, with all that said, I don't really have any uh, announcements or anything, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it because, again, kind of a spooky uh, kind of day in the weather department. Uh, here for our Halloween. So uh, you're currently looking at uh, satellite imagery across the lower 48 and I also included the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean here so we can kind of kill two birds with one stone, uh, which uh, again, I, I, it's such a morbid saying. I don't know who came up with that one, but um, uh, so we'll, we'll start with the lower 48 here and you'll notice again, here's our cold front crossing uh, much of the country. This did bring some severe weather yesterday into Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Missouri, and even up into Iowa. Uh, luckily, the tornado threat did not um, get to the potential that it could have yesterday. Uh, we did still have a couple warnings. In fact, we had a tornado warning overnight in St. Louis, uh, or at least the uh, kind of western suburbs of the city. Uh, so definitely did see a tornado risk overnight and uh, yesterday evening. But overall, uh, I would say the threat was a little lower than maybe expected by some folks. Uh, now, what's left of that is kind of this big time squall line with still a lot of lightning activity from, uh, it will say, kind of uh, southern Indiana southbound down towards uh, Texas, where again, these storms are continuing to stay quite electric. On the north side, where we have low pressure, uh, we also have a bit of, uh, you know, some extra precipitation falling on the backside of the storm due to uh, some enhanced divergence aloft caused by a jet streak. Uh, and that could bring some Halloween snow this afternoon for some folks. And we'll talk about that as well uh, here in just a moment. Now, the other big story is the tropics. And I'll just go ahead and kind of zoom in on it in a second. But uh, we're really watching this area down here into the Caribbean for potential development um, over the next uh, 10 days or so. Uh, now, really, I think development is probably likely over the next seven days at this point, maybe even the next five or six days. Uh, and here's kind of why I'm thinking that uh, if we kind of zoom in on satellite, you'll notice uh, our area that we're watching down here is becoming much better organized. Now, still a way to go uh, before becoming a tropical system, but environmental conditions are still relatively unfavorable due to some wind shear. Uh, and the system's already kind of, you know, getting towards that look, if you will, uh, of a wave that wants to become something more than a wave further on down the road. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen over the next week as this gets pulled northward. Um, now, we will show some operational models, but we're really going to just look at the ingredients today and some ensembles um, and kind of uh, piece all of this together. Now, we do have this other area as well that we're watching. This one, the National Hurricane Center does not have tagged, uh, but it's going to kind of work in tandem with our Caribbean area, uh, and both are going to have the chance to cause some tropical mischief uh, over the next week or so. Now, the latest from the National Hurricane Center, we are now up actually to a 50% chance of development over the next seven days. So yesterday we were at 40% uh, overnight and into this morning was the first bump up that we've seen uh, in a couple of days uh, in terms of chance of development. Uh, so again, now 50% chance, so 50-50 shot over the time period between now and next Thursday uh, to see the potential of this becomes more than just um, an open wave. And uh, again, we'll, we'll kind of look at the ingredients. One big ingredient for tropical development is warm sea surface temperatures. Uh, and that's something I can guarantee you that we do have in this part of the country currently, or of the world, I should say, not the country, uh, with uh, temperatures well up in and around 30 degrees Celsius. That's the upper 80s for Fahrenheit, uh, which is more than conducive enough for tropical development, including enough to support a hurricane. So uh, it, I don't think it's out of the question, honestly, that uh, about a week or so from now, we have a hurricane somewhere in this vicinity uh, I would not be surprised at all to see that. And I'll show you again a couple operational models that kind of agree with that th uh, thought process as well. Uh, but again, just note that uh, sea surface temperatures are still plenty warm enough for tropical development. Now, should the system get in the Gulf, the Gulf is still relatively warm. Uh, it's warm enough to support a tropical system. However, uh, it is much cooler than it was maybe a month or two ago. So that is good news. Uh, ocean temperatures overall are cooling down. 
uh, as you would expect getting into this time of year, especially closer to uh, the shoreline here where we have uh, kind of a cold pool along the Gulf Coast, uh, at least cold relative to maybe summertime temperatures. All right, so looking at these ingredients, what about moisture content? Well, again, right now, still plenty of moisture down here where we have that kind of area of potential development into uh, the deep part of the Caribbean, but there is some dry air lingering over Cuba, Jamaica, and this is pushing generally towards our area of interest, uh, which will hopefully you know quell it a little bit and keep it uh, somewhat tame. But uh, as we go further ahead into time, uh, a lot of the models do still develop this storm into something, uh, but does also get a lot of dry air into the Gulf of Mexico, into the Caribbean, uh, at least the Northern Caribbean. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens here for sure. And because of that dry air, I think the GFS is kind of uh, bringing this system up towards Hispaniola and kind of interacting with this other system, uh, or not really due to the dry air, but the dry air is limiting its ability to strengthen out into this direction. Uh, and I think it's Vortistis kind of getting pulled towards this other system over Hispaniola. Uh, but uh, again, either way, dry air is a bit of a limiting factor, I do think, with this environment. Uh, something that is going to be less of a limiting factor, however, is wind shear. Now, currently in the red, that's unfavorable conditions for tropical development due to wind shear. Blue is more favorable uh, due to less wind shear in the environment. Uh, and right now, again, we are in a pocket of some lesser wind shear, although still kind of hostile for development down here into uh, that uh, area that we currently have thunderstorm activity. But you'll notice as we move this ahead into time, uh, wind shear begins to calm down later this week, and this is Sunday afternoon, noticing a lot more blue showing up in the Caribbean. And by the time we get to next Monday afternoon, uh, yeah, pretty favorable conditions here in the wind shear department for development into the Caribbean. So you've got low wind shear, high sea surface temperatures. The only thing that you're kind of dodging at that point is some dry air. So overall, Again, pretty favorable for something to get going, and because of that, our ensembles do try to, to uh, do try to develop a storm. All right, so this is Saturday morning, and we'll bring this into Saturday afternoon. These are the GFS ensemble members. You'll notice again, kind of a bimodal setup here with uh, those two clusters of thunderstorms I showed you at the beginning, uh, both of which are kind of you know trying to develop some sort of storm system. But if we move this ahead into time on the GFS. Uh, these areas kind of interact a little bit, but it would appear that overall the Caribbean system uh, becomes the main area of vorticity. And uh, you'll notice some of these members becoming uh, pretty strong with pressures down into the 990s, even some into the 980s. And generally in uh, you know that five to seven day time frame working towards uh, the Northwestern Caribbean and towards the Gulf of Mexico, uh, a pretty good thought process on that. Uh, you'll see that continues. This is next Wednesday morning. Again, a big cluster of ensemble showing a storm in and around Cuba. Uh, it's after that, though, that the models go a little bit haywire and kind of, you know, do all sorts of crazy tracks. But I do think confidence is increasing uh, that in the five to seven day range, we'll have some sort of disturbance or tropical system in that circled area, uh, anywhere in between the Yucatan, Cuba, Jamaica, uh, and kind of the Honduras area there through the Northwestern Caribbean. I do think that that's a pretty high likelihood. Again, the NW or the NHC has a 50% chance of something developing just in the next seven days. Um, so I do think that that is something we will need to monitor. All right, so I did want to show you a couple global models. I'm not going to show them all to you, but uh, I want to kind of show you worst case scenario, not because I think worst case scenario is going to happen and not because I want um, to scare anybody, but uh, I just want to show you why we're still monitoring this because I get that it feels like we've been talking about this area for uh, the better part of a year straight now, uh, although the, the just the past week in general has felt like a year between the election and this tropical system that will not leave. Um, but uh, anyway, that's why I'm showing it to you, just to you know, kind of remind you that um, you know there is a reason we're watching this. So this is the Icon model uh, or the German model, and a couple runs in a row it has shown this. Uh, we get into next Wednesday or Tuesday, uh, and we do have a tropical storm here into the Northwest Caribbean. And again, after what I just showed you with the GFS ensembles, uh, you would think that this isn't that far fetched to see. Again, a lot of indications point towards this outcome. Uh, and then eventually the icon uh, continues to strengthen this, shoots the cap uh, between the Yucatan and Cuba, and has a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico about a week from now. Um, so again, I'm not showing that to scare anybody, and I'm not saying we're going to have a hurricane borderline major hurricane. I definitely don't think a major hurricane right now. Uh, 
uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. But just to remind you, again, there's a reason we're watching this, and it's not the only model showing that. The Canadian model as well uh, forms the system, pulls it into the Northwest Caribbean in a week or so, uh, and then into that seven to 10 day time frame, gets it into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and then on this model at least brings it into the Yucatan. Um, but uh, again, once we get into the Gulf, the models go a little bit haywire with steering currents and exactly where a storm system would go if it forms at all. Um, so again, just want to leave that there for now. All right, folks, well, that is the tropics. Um, let's talk about uh, the lower 48. And you're probably wondering, Gerald, what do you have pulled up on my screen? And are you trying to give me epilepsy or a seizure? No, not quite. But um, uh, these are imping reports. These are reports from people on the ground on what is currently falling in their location. And I do this just to show you, again, it's a pretty active morning out there. All the blue you see is rain uh, and that little bit of uh, kind of uh, blue snowflake <laughs> looking icons is snow or some sleet or uh, probably snow in all honesty uh, falling through uh, portions of the country. So an active Halloween for sure. Uh, and we talked about this. I told you the pattern was going to get active. This is just the first storm system of many folks. Uh, this is going to be a pattern that um, lasts likely well into November uh, and brings the potential for, again, multiple storm systems, including the one we just talked about in the tropics, uh, but also these big mid-latitude cyclones that are really going to ramp up uh, the severe weather threat here into the future. Now, let's kind of take a look at radar and watches and mornings. Again, if you're east of the Appalachia chain this morning and nothing really happening, uh, all good. But that changes quickly as you get into the Midwest uh, the Ohio River Valley and the Mississippi River Valley. Again, we've got low pressure right here. Uh, we've got uh, our warm front here and our cold front position somewhere like that. Uh, and uh, because of that, we're getting a lot of precipitation to fall. So uh, again, a big squall line with strong storms on the south side into the warm sector, uh, and then uh, some good old fashioned rain falling up into Canada. But on the back side here, uh, this kind of uh, little pocket that you see that has shown up of rainfall that almost looks a little secluded. Uh, this is uh, formed due to a jet streak that is kind of working over this low pressure and on the diverging side or the left exit region of that jet streak, uh, we are getting a lot of lift in the atmosphere. And because of that, we've got this pretty uh, hefty band of precipitation that has formed, and some of it is falling in the form of snowfall. Again, just to remind you, see these little blue snowflake icons showing up into uh, southern and southwestern Minnesota. Uh, again, we are starting to mix this rain with some snow uh, into this region. So we're going to break that down a little bit more in just a second, but I will mention uh, we do have winter weather advisories in the purple from Minneapolis uh, up here into uh, surrounding areas of northern Wisconsin. Uh, so again, this includes Minneapolis, uh, the Ironwood area, Duluth under this um, winter weather advisory. So definitely kind of interesting that we're getting some of that um, Halloween snowfall and uh, definitely interesting to see if I can get the radar back up. Here's the right button. Uh, we will zoom back out and take a look out west. Again, the plane's pretty clear right now, but you had a very active day yesterday, so uh, I'm sure you will take that uh, more quiet weather. The Rockies, uh, it has been a never-ending train of storm systems, and that is continuing, uh, continuing with big-time mountain snow today uh, and some valley rain as well. So definitely an active scene across much of the lower 48. Uh, with that said, let's start by talking about this um, snow potential into the northern plains. So uh, this is the uh, high resolution rapid refresh model for about the time this video is happening. And I'll mention, uh, I talked in yesterday's video that the models were kind of all over the place, that places up here could see either nothing or five or six inches of snow. Uh, I think we've definitely trended closer to the nothing category. Um, not to say that it's not going to snow, and again, I showed you it already is, but this band's taking a little bit longer to transition from rain to heavy, wet snow, uh, and I think that heavy, wet snow is going to struggle to accumulate a little bit, but uh, we do still have that potential for, on the backside here, enough dynamical cooling uh, in the atmosphere that would get this band of heavy snow, and that moves through this morning uh, into this afternoon. You'll notice, even swinging on through the Minneapolis area, some nice, uh, big, heavy, wet snowflakes falling uh, for your Halloween afternoon, and eventually, again, skirting up into northern Wisconsin. Uh, and by the time we get this evening, even the western portions of the UP of Michigan are going to get in on some snow falling, uh, and that will continue to work on through before overnight tonight uh, into the early morning hours of tomorrow, starting to clear out. But uh, definitely some of the first uh, flakes of the year for folks up here. 
And exactly how much snow are we going to see? Um, well, I think it really depends, but I do think we're going to see a good swath of one to three inches of snow from kind of uh, the Minneapolis area up into uh, northern, um, uh, excuse me, northwestern Wisconsin there. And you'll notice we are seeing some differences in kind of how the forecast falls off here. Uh, even the National Weather Service offices locally are kind of disagreeing on how much snow is going to fall. But again, I think just to give you my prognostic here, I think right into this area, a pretty good band of we'll say one to three inches of snow. Uh, isolated spots uh, you know, aren't going to hit that one inch mark. Other spots might get a little bit more than three inches, but I think as an overall uh, outcome, one to three inches in that area of northwestern Wisconsin and kind of back into the Minneapolis and Duluth area is a fair bet. And then we'll even move this into the UP of Michigan. I do think areas up into the western UP could pick up a quick inch or two this afternoon and evening. Uh, isolated spots, maybe with some enhanced um, uh, lake effect on the backside and or um, some terrain that is helping out. Could get more than that, maybe in the three to five inch territory, um, but uh, definitely some uh, some flakes flying. So I know I've got some viewers into the UP. Definitely let me know what you see. Uh, if you see any snow falling, would love to hear those reports. All right, now let's go ahead and switch to the other threat for our Halloween, and that is severe weather. We do have a marginal risk up from Cincinnati and Bloomington, uh, Indiana, all the way down towards Shreveport and Monroe uh, and into the Palestine and Tyler portions of Texas and back up into Texarkana. Main threat this afternoon is going to be strong straight line winds uh, and maybe even a little bit of hail, although the uh, Storm Prediction Center not indicating that, so not a huge threat for hail today, but wind and even uh, an isolated tornado threat. Uh, now, again, nothing showing up right now for that, but I do think that uh, do not be surprised if a tornado warning or two is issued this afternoon. Uh, I would not rule it out, and I'll show you the places I think that it's most likely to happen uh, in just a moment. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and move into uh, that uh, future forecast for this afternoon and into tomorrow uh, through the entire eastern half of the country. So here we go. We'll move this ahead. This is about 12 o'clock. Time in the top right is in Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you'll notice, again, pretty good squall line showing up here. Uh, and uh, we do have that snow on the northern end as well that I talked about. So again, the severe weather threat really going to be right into this region as we get a little bit of afternoon heating combined with just enough forcing left over from this front uh, that uh, we could get a little bit of a mix. Now, I think if we're going to see an isolated tornado, it's most likely to be kind of on the northern side of this threat. Uh, I think we're going to have the highest kinematic support up there. Uh, and it does not take much instability uh, with these QLCS setups to get a quick spin up. So don't rule it out. Again, not a big concern today, but just something worth mentioning. Uh, but we move through this afternoon and uh, that squall line continues to swing on through the country, weakening throughout the day, I think, uh, and we'll get this into about 6, 7 o'clock Eastern tonight. About that time, you'd start sending the kids out to trick or treat. And uh, I do think we need to watch for some rain showers from, uh, again, kind of Detroit all the way back down into the Gulf Coast of Louisiana and Texas. Uh, so it could definitely be a soggy one through Nashville, Louisville, uh, back down into Jackson, Mississippi. Much of Louisiana uh, might not be the best conditions for those trick or treaters, but uh, definitely uh, some rain that we need because it has been very dry recently. So. Uh, you know, you hate that uh, it happens on a day that maybe you had plans, but um, uh, we could use the rain, so we will absolutely take it. Uh, to the north of that, again, a lot of rain up into Canada, mixing with snow on the northern side of this as that warm front lifts north uh, and we get some lift with it. Uh, we'll get this into overnight tonight, and you'll notice some scattered showers even working on into the northeast, back down the <coughs> Appalachia chain into Mississippi and Alabama. Again, really need the rain in these areas, and we could get just a little bit out of it, but we're seeing some pretty um, big frontalysis on the south side of this. What does that mean? Well, it just means that the front is weakening, uh, but you'll notice if we look at our surface trough, the front is still extending pretty far down, uh, and obviously just from the precipitation you can see, we're getting enough lift all the way down towards the Gulf Coast to at least ring out a little bit of precipitation. Uh, into the I-95 corridor tomorrow morning, uh, back down towards Knoxville, Huntsville, Jackson. Uh, and I do think tomorrow afternoon there's a chance some of this precipitation is able to cross the Appalachia chain. Uh, maybe a couple showers in the Greenville-Spartanburg area. Charlotte could maybe pick up on a quick shower tomorrow evening. Uh, but at that point, things calm down pretty quickly uh, and the front moves on out of here and then all eyes turn to the next storm system. And speaking of that next storm system, well, here it is starting out west, big time mountain snow and valley rain already beginning for our Halloween afternoon. We get it into this evening about the time again that those trick-or-treaters would start going out. 
Uh, and uh, again, big time mountain snow from Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, big time coastal rain into Washington and Oregon, dry for much of the desert southwest in California, so nicer conditions out that way. Uh, but eventually, the storm system does move southward. And uh, here we go, Friday afternoon, the peak of the storm, probably for Washington and Oregon. Uh, breezy conditions, again, very heavy snowfall in the mountains, valley rain. And I'll also mention, uh, we get a little bit of a short wave that produces just enough of a uh, surface low pressure here into Montana and Wyoming uh, that uh, our Friday morning and afternoon could try to cross into the Dakotas uh, and bring some snow showers. So don't let that catch you off guard there into those regions. Um, and then that gets us into overnight Friday and into Saturday, uh, which sets up shop for our next severe weather threat beginning into the weekend, uh, which we will go ahead and talk about now. All right, so speaking of that severe weather threat, uh, starting really as early as tomorrow, uh, we do have a marginal risk through West Texas and into uh, New Mexico, but I think it really ramps up into our Saturday and Sunday. For our Saturday, you'll notice uh, we already have a slight risk up for much of the panhandle of Texas, and then that marginal risk extending up into Kansas, uh, Oklahoma, and surrounding areas. So this is the start of that next storm system that we're watching uh, and this one could be a bit of a doozy, folks. I do think this one will probably be even more impactful than the one we just had. Uh, and uh, here's why. It all starts with our upper-level wind pattern. Uh, we'll get this into Sunday afternoon here. Uh, and this is a big-time trough, very amplified, uh, and relatively neutrally to almost even slightly negatively tilted at this point, uh, which would indicate uh, strong advection and strong lift with this uh, system. And we're probably going to get a pretty strong surface low because of it uh, here over portions of the plains. Now, one big difference with this storm system is our trough on the backside, uh, kind of the converging side of this trough has a lot more um, oomph to it, if you will, which oftentimes can help really accelerate these things out of the Rockies. Uh, which, um, again, really enhances that lift and those kinematics as well as the thermodynamics that kind of work hand to hand. Um, but again, a, a very big time trough, and that continues into early next week. Uh, we're getting even a bit of a jet streak over the uh, central part of the country by Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday there. So that could lead to some enhanced lift as well in some places. Um, and we'll definitely need to watch that. And then take a look at what happens after that later on next week, about a week from now, uh, another storm system, a bit of a bowling ball low here. Uh, once again, it works on through. So it, it's an active pattern through at least the next 10 days. And just to show that to you, uh, here we go this weekend. Uh, here's that storm system getting going by Sunday afternoon. Uh, a strong low pressure uh, right here, a good old fashioned Colorado low will be one of many that we see. Uh, and we do get some precipitation on the northern side along this warm front. And eventually, uh, we get some strong precipitation on the south side and some severe weather potential all weekend and into early next week into the plains. Uh, heavy rocky mountain snow on the backside of the storm system, uh, and then that kind of works on through and looks and look what happens. Another storm right behind it next week, and then after that, another storm right behind that one. So, uh, you know, I don't want to break these down too much into detail right now, but just know, again, active pattern, storm system after storm system, severe weather very likely this weekend into early next week. Uh, and one of the reasons here is that low level jet, our 850 millibar temperatures uh, and kind of wind direction early next week and into this weekend, very strong southerly winds here in the low levels, indicating warm air advection, indicating instability growing. That combined with all the wind from those low pressure systems um, is going to be a recipe for strong to severe storms for an extended period of time. Uh, I think even outbreak potential is possible if you add it all up through all of those days. And you can even see that on our thunderstorm fuel or our surface-based cape map. Uh, again, thunderstorm fuel this afternoon for some folks dies down a little bit tomorrow, uh, but then a big surge again this weekend into the plains. Uh, and again, that likely to fuel the chances for severe weather in a lot of the same places that just saw it yesterday. All right, snowfall over the next 10 days is really going to be a Rocky Mountain snow event. Um, we could have a couple times of snow breaks containment of the mountains, but really all of the big snow right now that I'm seeing uh, is going to be in those higher elevations. Now, I do think there are times that we could get some snow into the foothills out here of Colorado, uh, maybe even portions of western Nebraska, Kansas, and the Dakotas, uh, including that little event uh, tomorrow that I mentioned. Uh, but overall, all the big snow is still kind of stuck in the Rockies. No big uh, snowstorm expected outside of there uh, in the near future. Rainfall-wise, a lot of rain here coming to the Great Plains. 
uh, which is good. They could use it. They are in drought conditions, um, but uh, going to watch for that. Looks still pretty dry east of the Appalachia chain. Maybe a little bit of rain at times, but um, nothing that is going to break the bank. So uh, that's uh, that's what we got, folks. That's uh, kind of what I'm expecting over the next uh, week or so. Tried to make this video a little bit shorter than yesterday's. Yesterday got a little bit long. Um, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the latest here on the lower 48. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, but with that said, y'all have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Stay safe out there. Enjoy it. And I'll see you all tomorrow.